Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Insya-Allah. We will continue our discussion on the topic of uh, perfect competition and perfect competition from uh, the perspective of Islam. Okay, so perfect competition describes a market structure whose assumptions are extremely strong and um, perfect competition is highly unlikely to exist in the real world. The, the reality is that most markets are not perfectly competitive. So the perfect competition is uh, exists only in the textbook. In reality, most markets uh, are not uh, perfectly competitive. However, we study perfect competition uh, because um, there is uh, some value in understanding how price, how output, and uh, how equilibrium is established in the in the perfect competition. So in the uh, <coughs> microeconomics, we studied how perfect competition works. There are four types of market structure. Uh, perfect competition, oligopoly, monopolistic competition, and monopoly. So those are the four types of market structure that we learned in um, uh, economics and microeconomic classes. So why we study about perfect competition? Because uh, uh, perfect competition, uh, there are some uh, values, there are some uh, advantages. Um, perfect competition is supposed to maximize uh, consumer uh, surplus, maximize producer surplus, and maximize the um, social welfare. So compared to monopoly, perfect competition is the most ideal market structure. All right. So let's uh, look at the uh, characteristics of uh, perfect competition. Number one, there are large number of buyers and sellers. So there is a large number of independently acting sellers. Each seller uh, of, offer their products or their goods and services in uh, not at, at uh, national and some of them at international markets. For example, farm commodities right, uh, like there are some uh, uh, durian producers, mango producers, lemon producers from Thailand, they, sub, they export uh, the farm commodities to other countries, to Malaysia. So if Thailand doesn't export the farm commodities, we would not be able to eat durian. Uh, and some other fruits, mango, uh, mempelam, kemboja. Okay, so example of perfect competition, which is uh, quite uh, close. Huh? Example of a 
uh, market structure which is close to perfect competition, such as farm or agricultural commodities, the stock market and the foreign exchange market. The second characteristic of uh, perfect competition is standardized or homogeneous product. The product or the goods and services is standardized and homogeneous. Okay, homogeneous means the goods and services are perceived as identical or similar from the point of view of the consumers. Okay, and the, sec the third characteristic is uh, price takers individual sellers, individual firms cannot uh, change, cannot influence the product price. So because the market is, uh, the market consists of uh, many firms, okay? So the market consists of many firms, uh, many firms, or we call an infinite number of firms, all selling the same or homogeneous product, right? So any single firm, which is small, so any single firm represents only a tiny or small portion of the whole market. So nobody, no any, no seller, can uh, influence the market price. Okay, so each seller takes the price as given in the market. Okay, so no single firm can influence and change the market price by adjusting the output. Because uh, each firm only makes up a small percentage of the entire market uh, supply. So each, each firm is so tiny, so small that, uh, and there are many of the firms uh, so that each single firm cannot influence the market price. So that's the third characteristic of the perfect competition. The fourth characteristic is um, free entry and exit. There are no restriction, okay, no legal restriction, okay, no technological uh, impediments, no financial restrictions, and no other obstacles or restrictions that prevent new firms from entering the industry or leaving the, uh, the industry or the market. And it's uh, easy for firms to enter or exit the industry. So that is the, those are the characteristics of a perfect competition. All right. Any question? I mean, Amar Siti Rahma. Noor Azlina. Any, any question? Ada soalan pa? Dah makan? Belum lagi. Oh, belum makan lagi? Pukul, pukul dua setengah dah? Uh. Belum makan lagi? Puasa? Ha, tak apa, makan lewat sikit. Uh, uh, tak, tadi pergi bank. Oh, 
buat puasa kan Nak puasa dapat puasa sunat Alright, let uh, let's talk about Islamic view on perfect competition. Uh, this is on the exam. Okay, Islamic view on perfect competition. In theory, perfect competition is an ideal concept. Right, perfect competition uh, brings the maximum uh, consumer surplus okay perfect competition brings about the uh, maximum producer surplus and also perfect competition results in maximum social welfare this is what we discussed in uh, the principles of economic class and also in the microeconomics class. So ideally, perfect competition is the best market structure. Then what's the problem? Okay, what's the problem with perfect competition? Uh, there are certain disadvantages and shortcomings of the uh, perfect competition. There are certain um, disadvantages and uh, shortcomings of the perfectly uh, competitive market. Can you hear me? Boleh dengar? Boleh dengar? Boleh, sound, sound okay. Okay. So there are disadvantages and shortcomings of the um, perfect competition. What's the problem with perfect competition? Uh, Nor Azlina, what are the disadvantages or shortcomings of the perfect competition or perfectly competitive market. No, Azlina? Ya, yeah. apa saya tadi tak dengar. What are the disadvantages and shortcomings of the perfectly competitive market? Hmm, perfect competition. Apa masalah dia? Apa kekurangan dia? Apa kelemahan pasaran persaingan sempurna ni? Kalau ada apa dia? Kelemahan dia. Kekurangan dia. Ni tak pasti sangat eh doktor. Okay. Dalam in the in the perfectly competitive market, there are no halal or non-halal provisions in the conventional perfect compet, perfectly competitive market. Okay. Dalam pasaran pesanan sempurna. Okay. Dalam dalam uh, 
the the sudo the sudo uh, conventional tidak ada halal tidak ada konsep halal tidak ada konsep haram oh, itu dia punya kelemahan okay, dalam conventional lah. nak jual arak boleh okay, kalau pergi ke negara-negara negara tertentu mudah untuk dapat arak Okey, boleh berjudi. Okey, boleh melakukan apa-apa kerja aktiviti asalkan asalkan dapat memaksimumkan utility ataupun kepuasan. Itu yang kita belajar dalam pasaran persaingan sempurna dalam kelas uh, mikroekonomi, right? So from Islamic point of view the production and consumption of goods and services must be permissible by sharia okay pengeluaran dan penggunaan barang dan perkhidmatan mestilah ya halal consumers and produce, consumers must consume goods and services which are halal. Producers must produce and sell goods and services which are halal. Any haram goods and services cannot be consumed, must not be consumed, and must not be produced from Islamic point of view. Okay? And it must be legal. Barang tu mestilah sah dari segi undang-undang must be legal according to the provision of law it must be halal and it must be legal okay nur hazira nur hazira ya doktor di malaysia ni ada tak barang-barang yang haram yang dijual ada? Pasal apa? Islam melarang. Tapi Sebab. pasal pasal apa jual? Contohnya apa? Jualan secara haram. Contohnya apa benda yang haram tu? Hmm. Rokok. Okey, lagi. Ah, uh, meracun kalau time raya-raya perayaan perayaan-perayaan. Okay. Perayaan. Ada, ada, ada juga. Ada. Hmm. So apa jual? Islam kan melarang. Tempat apa jual benda haram? Sebab benda tu uh, senang jual. <laughs> dia ada dia ada banyak hujah lah di Malaysia ni kan ada orang uh. Islam dan ada orang bukan Islam jadi antara hujah hmm. lah penjualan, penjualan arak itu hanya untuk orang bukan Islam tapi orang Islam beli arak tu oh, tu masalah lah bila, bila orang Islam beli masalah lah Uh, orang Islam beli ketum, minum banyak ketum, minum arak, berjudi, jual nombor ekor kan. Hmm, nombor ekor tu judi lah. So itu semua adalah haram. Uh, mengikut Islam, uh, from Islamic point of view, uh, barang yang haram tidak boleh di tak boleh digunakan dan tak boleh dijual di pasaran. Okay, Indonesia cuba mengharamkan penjualan arak bulan lepas. Okay, itu satu benda yang bagus. Lah. Di Brunei penjualan arak, judi semua diharamkan. Lah. Tapi di Malaysia ni masih belum lah. Antara hujahnya kenapa? Sebab di Malaysia ni kan ada orang bukan Islam. Ha, itu, itu antara hujah lah. 
So in Islamic market, the production and consumption of goods and services must be permissible by Sharia, must be halal, and must be legal according to the provision of law. Mesti mengikut, mestilah barang dan perkhidmatan tu mestilah benda yang uh, sah di segi undang-undang untuk dijual. Okay. Baru ni ada, kamu tahu ada token kosmetik kena denda RM10,500 sebab menjual barang kosmetik yang tidak mematuhi undang-undang. So barang yang dijual mestilah halal dan mestilah legal. Siapa kenal? Token kosmetik, nama apa? Dia kena denda RM10,500. Siapa kenal? Tak tahu. Siapa yang tahu? Tak tahu, tak kenal. Siapa yang kenal? Siapa yang tak kenal? Semua orang tak kenal? Tak kenal. Tak tahu pun cerita ni, Doktor. Oh tak tahu. Kemarin. Kemarin ke kemarin dulu. Kena tangkap. Uh, syarikat dia nama apa dia tu? Amalia apa? So, uh, producers are not permitted to produce and sell haram goods. Haram goods means goods which are not permissible. Such as judi, gambling eh? nombor ekor, arak uh, dan sebagainya. Saja sepuluh... Patin Amira saya nak. Eh, doktor. Uh, nama apa? Patin, Patin Amira. Siapa dia Patin Amira? Tokyo Kosmetik tu? Ya, apa? Ah, nama dia. Oh, nama Tokyo Kosmetik tu? Patin Amira? Oh, okay. Dia jual kosmetik apa? Barang apa? Amira Beauty. Amira Beauty. Oh. Jadi ha, masalah dia skincare. Skincare masalah sebahagian pada skincare produk dia tu uh, tak sah di segi undang-undang tak. sebab sebab tak diluluskan penjualannya. Betul tak? Dia tak sah KKM kot. Ha uh, dia tak tak lulus uh, KKM eh. So, bila tak lulus KKM dia salah dari segi undang-undang untuk menjual barang-barang kosmetik. Hmm. Sajat, sajat. Jual apa? Kamu kenal sajat? Siapa kenal sajat? Sajat jual bengkung. Sajat jual bengkung? Bengkung tu apa? Bengkung tu apa? Sajak tu lelaki. Bengkung lah. DJ. Harap tu. Ha? Bengkung tu apa? Nak bagi badan elok lah. Bengkung tu doktor yang orang perempuan pakai dekat dekat dia punya perut tu. Macam contoh orang yang baru lepas bersalin tu kan. Oh. Yang diikat kat perut tu. Ha yang tu lah. Sajak yang tu eh? Sajak yang jual? Dia bosan doktor tu yang dia ah, jual. Haa doktor sajak yang jual. <laughs> Pasal apa sajak jual? Sajak tu laki. Dia tak ada tak bagi nak jadi perempuan doktor. Sian dia. Dia. Bos, dia bosan doktor. Dia berasa, berasa syok yang dia perempuan. Oh sajak tu syok nak jadi perempuan. Pasal apa dia syok nak jadi perempuan? Dia laki. Kamu tahu dia, dia dia dah boring. Sajak tu dah boring. Lepas tu dia kata dia nak keluar Islam. Kamu tahu? Tahu doktor, tahu. Haa, maksud tu lah. Tak tahu lah apa nak edit. Sajak je tu doktor nak ugut je tu. Dia nak ugut je. Marketing doktor, marketing. Oh marketing. Dia nak bagi laku produk dia kot. Dia... Dia, dia gempak dia tu, nak bagi Nak bagi sensasi lah tu, lepas tu produk dia laku lah 
Sajak tu dulu dia, um, dah, dia dah jadi betul. laki. Dulu dia jadi laki. Lepas tu dia jadi perempuan balik. Yang tu Safi kot. Yang tu Safi Ilyas doktor. Ha. Oh tu orang lain pula. Ah ha, tu Safi Ilyas. Tu siapa? Safi. Yang tu member dia doktor. Siapa Safi, Safi 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 Ilyas. Oh tu Safi Ilyas. Ha ah. Uh-uh. Oh tu orang lain pula. Hmm, yang member tu memang dia, dia yang yang tu dia memang mengaku yang dia lelaki. Oh, Safi eh, tu. Lepas tu dia jadi perempuan yang sahaja ni sampai ke sudah tak mengaku yang dia lelaki. Oh, sahaja ni tak mengaku dia lelaki. Takkan tak tahu lelaki ke perempuan. Senang je nak cek lelaki ke perempuan. Kesak je boleh cek lelaki dengan perempuan. Kenapa saya berpayah sangat nak cek lelaki ke perempuan? Sahaja sebab dia punsa. Punsa? Oh, Haa, punsa. Pun so payah lah nak cek tu. Tapi sebab tak. sebab tu lah mak dia, mak dia pun cakap yang mula-mula mak dia cakap dia perempuan yang waktu dulu. Apa video yang lama-lama dulu yang waktu dia tak viral lagi. Lepas tu bila dia dah viral semua, mak dia mengaku yang dia sendiri pun uh, pernah sahaja tu perempuan. Sebab tu ada yang macam kekeliruan dekat apa Jabatan Agama apa, uh, semua tu. Ha. Oh ingatkan, ingatkan dia lelaki dia khusa. Oh, pusat payah sikit. Dia kawan dengan Akilah tu, so, Doktor. Akilah? Akilah siapa? Hmm. Aki, Akilah Aki, kawan dengan Saja ah. Ha? Akilah tu siapa? Siapa dia? Ada Akilah? dalam ni, Sir. Awak fitnah, Doktor. Mana Akilah ni? Akilah kawan dengan Saja? Betul ke? Ya? Betul ke Akilah? Betul ke? Ya, Doktor. Ha? Betul ke tak betul Akilah? Mereka De- saja beli skincare sekali je. Mulut merah apa semua mereka beli sekali. Awang lagi kenal doktor. Sebab tu dia tahu sajak kawan dengan siapa. Macam nak awang boleh kenal sajak? Uh, awang ni baik dengan sajak. Tak sekejap kan? main bola tu ke doktor? Ha? Dulu kan main bola. Lepas tu tak main dah sebab dia tukar jadi perempuan je. Dia kawan dengan Akilah pula. <laughs> oh dulu sajak tu main bola? Dia jadi apa? Dia jadi goli ke? Akilah kawan Lepas dengan Akilah sahaja. duk ajar dah pakai gincu tu. Akilah pakai gincu ke? Tengok gambar sikit Akilah pakai gincu ke? Awang mohon doktor. <laughs> Awang ni fitnah Akilah pula lah. Berdosa fitnah orang. <laughs> Awang minta maaf balik awang. <laughs> Dosa. Dosa fitnah. Kena minta maaf balik kat Akilah. Tidak berdosa. Hei apa awang ni? Hei fitnah awang pula dah. Okay. So, sambung mana? Consumption of haram goods and services are prohibited in Islam. In addition, market participants consisting of consumers and producers must hold high ethical and welfare considerations while engaging in transaction activities in the market. In addition, producers... In addition... Furthermore, producers must be socially responsible by not contributing to negative externalities such as pollution. Okay, pengeluar-pengeluar mestilah menjadi uh, business entity yang bertanggungjawab. Okay, jang, okay jangan, jang, jangan menyumbang kepada pencemaran. Ada ada tiga hari lepas uh, kapal daripada Vietnam ditangkap kerana mencurahkan pencemaran ke dalam laut sempadan Malaysia. Okay, ada pengilang-pengilang yang mencemarkan alam sekitar, membuang pen- membuang bahan-bahan kimia tercemar ke dalam sungai. So itu sangat dilarang dalam Islam. 
Furthermore, business is encouraged to be involved in corporate social responsibility by actively participating in social events and sponsoring social activities. Okay, business juga digalakkan untuk terlibat dalam corporate social responsibility, tanggungjawab uh, social corporate. Okay, dengan uh, memberi derma, terlibat dalam aktiviti kemasyarakatan dan membantu golongan-golongan yang memerlukan dan ditimpa musibah. Jadi bila ada keuntungan yang lebih tu kena set aside. Set aside atau put aside some allocation untuk disedekahkan. Ya, diagihkan balik kepada masyarakat dalam bentuk corporate social responsibility. So ada konsep sadaqah, ada konsep apa ni membantu orang lain. Okay, let's move on to next topic which is a monopoly. A monopoly is a specific type of economic market structure. A monopoly exists when a specific person or enterprise is the only supplier of a particular uh, goods or services. Okay, contohnya macam apa ni? Astro. Okay, macam Astro, TNB. Uh, di mana hanya ada satu saja pengeluar untuk uh, barang tertentu. A monopoly exists when a specific person or enterprise is the only supplier of a particular good or service. As a result, monopoly are characterized by a lack of competition. Bila dia seorang saja pengeluar, jadi tak ada saingan. Lah. So monopolies are characterized by a lack of competition within the market producing a good or service. This is a this is a figure or graph of monopoly. Okay, monopoly maximizes a profit. So the objective of monopoly in conventional economics is to maximize profit. Profit is maximized when marginal revenue, okay, this is marginal revenue, intersects with marginal cost, okay. So this is the point of intersection, and this is the quantity produced by monopoly, and this is price charged by monopoly. And um, perfect competition, Okay, maximize profit when the uh, demand equal to supply. So this is the demand, and this is marginal cost or supply curve. So the intersection is here. Price equals marginal cost or demand equals supply is here. So this is the quantity produced by the uh, perfect competition. So we see that the quantity produced by perfect competition is higher than the quantity produced by monopoly, right? The price of perfect, sorry, the quantity produced by perfect competition is higher than the quantity produced by monopoly. So that means monopoly produce less than perfect competition. A monopoly produce or charge higher price compared to the price charged by perfect competition. So looking at this graph, we can see that perfect competition is better than monopoly, right? Perfect competition charges lower price compared to the monopoly price and perfect competition charge uh, produce higher quantity compared to the quantity produced by monopoly. All right, so this is what we learned in microeconomics.
So characteristics of a monopoly, a monopoly is characterized by certain characteristics that set it aside from other market structure. The first is a profit maximizer, a monopoly maximizes profits. So due to the lack of competition, a firm can charge a set price, can, can charge a price, the monopoly can charge a price above uh, the price charge in the perfect competition. So therefore, the monopoly maximize the profit. Number two, monopoly is the price maker or price setter. Price maker or price setter. The monopoly decides uh, the price of the goods or services being sold. The firm or the price is set by determining the quantity in order to demand the price desired by the firm. So, so the price is set by equating the um, by equating the marginal revenue. to marginal cost in order to maximize maximize profit right so monopoly set uh, marginal revenue equals to marginal cost in order to maximize profit. So the price charged by monopoly is higher than the price charged by perfect competition. The third category is there is no entry or we call high barriers to entry. Other producers are the new firms are unable to enter the market of the monopoly. Other new firms So new firms cannot uh, cannot enter the market of the monopoly. Single seller, there is only one seller. Okay, in a monopoly, uh, one seller uh, produce. Only one seller or producer produces uh, all the outputs, produces uh, all or goods or services. So the entire market is served by single firm, by one single firm. So for practical purposes, the firm is the same as the industry because in the industry, there is only one firm. Price discrimination in a monopoly, uh, the firm can charge the price and quantity of the goods and services. So the monopoly is the market or, or the price sector. It, 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 it decides what uh, price uh, to charge the customers. Sources of monopoly power in a monopoly, the uh, specific sources generate the individual control of the market. Why some, why some uh, markets are controlled by only one seller or producer? So some, some of the sources of 
Monopoly power include economies of scale, capital requirements, technological superior, superiority, no substitute goods, control of natural resources, network externalities, legal barriers, and deliberate actions. I will not discuss this because uh, we studied <coughs> this in the uh, principle of economics and uh, microeconomics class. Okay. Contrast or differences between uh, differences. Differences between monopoly and competitive market. Monopolies and competitive uh, market. Monopoly and competitive markets mark the extremes in regard to market structure. There are a few similarities between uh, monopoly and competitive market. Uh, the cost functions are assumed to be the same and both try to minimize the cost and maximize profit. The shutdown decisions are the same and both are assumed to have perfectly competitive market factors. There are noticeable, there are differences between uh, monopoly and the competitive market. There are differences between the two market structures, including marginal revenue and price product differentiation, number of competitors, barriers to entry, elasticity of demand, excess profits, profit maximization, and the supply curve. The most significant distinction is that a monopoly has a downward sloping demand instead of the perceived perfectly elastic curve of the perfectly competitive market. This is uh, what this is what we learned in uh, other class in microeconomic class. So now Islamic view on monopoly. All right, this is on the exam. So can we say that Islam prohibits uh, monopoly? Actually, we cannot say. Actually, we, it is not correct to say that Islam prohibits monopoly. Although there are many disadvantages of monopoly. So, in order, in order to, to make a decision on, on whether uh, Islam prohibits monopoly or not. Uh, we have to look at the uh, advantages and disadvantages of the existence of the monopoly. So the, there must be a case by case evaluation. Right? So a case by case evaluation should be done to determine uh, the permissibility, the to determine the permissibility of each monopoly. So, can I think of a case by case about the monopoly to the 
dibolehkan dan dibenarkan dalam Islam ataupun tidak. So a case by case evaluation should be done to determine the permissibility of each monopoly. So we have to look at case by case. There are advantages of monopolies such as uh, economies of scale. There are advantages of monopolies such as uh, economies of scale and natural monopolies, uh, domestic dominance and international competition and technological progress. However, there are also disadvantage, disadvantages of monopolies, such as monopolies, <coughs> monopolies charge higher price than competitive market. I mean, uh, uh, monopoly also produce less output compared to the competitive market. So less output, higher price compared to the competitive market. And monopolies also reduce consumer surplus and reduce social welfare and restrict the choice for consumers to choose and also reduce consumer sovereignty means that uh, uh, means that consumer have no choice all right so in the next class uh, we will discuss um, Islamic uh, fiscal policy. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam. Uh, that's all the class for today. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh.